This is a right shoulder. We've got a rotator cuff tear involving supraspinatus and about half the infraspinatus. I've got a lateral working portal with a passport and then a posterior portal with a passport with a posterior viewing portal at this point. And I'm making an accessory lateral portal just with a percutaneous stab wound here to uh, place my anchors. So we'll use a standard swivel lock punch first. And we're going to go right at the articular margin and use our swivel lock punch to make a hole there. So now we'll do a quick exchange of the punch for the anchor and the inserter. Okay. Okay, now we'll turn and replace our swivel lock in. This is the knotless swivel lock. And now I'm going to back off that sleeve just to be sure that I'm at or slightly below the surface with my anchor and that looks just about perfect. So we'll take off the tab from the uh, handle and then we'll just remove the, uh, the inserter. So there's our anteromedial knotless swivel lock anchor. Now I'm going to switch to a lateral viewing portal to place my posteromedial anchor which is also going to be the knotless swivel lock with the self-cinching mechanism. And that looks like that's going to be a good spot right there. This will be our posteromedial anchor. And now we've got our two medial anchors placed. Next I'm going to go back to the posterior viewing portal. We'll pass our sutures with the shuttling technique using a suture tape fiber link. And we'll do this with the more anterior sutures first. And you want to be about two to three millimeters lateral to the muscle tendon junction. That's the anatomic uh, point of the tendon that will line up with the articular margin in the uh, non-torn rotator cuff. So that's where we'd want to have it in the, in the torn rotator cuff. So the fiber link has a looped end that you'll shuttle through and then it has a straight end that is the pulling end. So hold on to the looped end and, and let go of the straight end and we'll pull the straight end out here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load the shuttle, the fiber link shuttle. So we're going to pass all four of these sutures, the two tapes, uh, the working suture, and then the straight end of the passing suture. Okay, and you can watch these pass through. Now I always turn these back on themselves within the loop of the fiber link so that uh, you won't pull that loop down to the base of the anchor and actually foul your sutures as you go through. Then I like to pull all the slack out. Okay, so now we're going to pass this uh, suture tape fiber link for the posterior medial anchor sutures. And we'll place that right about there, about two millimeters lateral to the muscle tendon junction. And then we're going to hold on to the looped end of that and bring out the straight end, which is going to be our pulling end. Got it? So now we'll use our um, Kingfisher fiber tape retriever to pull all the tapes out and all the sutures out from that posteromedial anchor. And then we'll shuttle those through. And then once again we want to pull on these, be sure all the slack is out. And then I'm going to look back through this uh, lateral viewing portal just to be sure all the slack is out of those sutures. So there are posterior tapes and you see all the slack is out of those, all the slack is out of those anterior tapes. So this is where the uh, ends of the tapes are joined together and spliced together for, for passing. We don't need to pass these as a unit anymore, we're just going to go ahead and cut uh, just proximal to that splice, like so. And now we have two individual fiber tape ends. And then we'll do the same thing for the anterior medial anchor. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create slack in this entire bundle of sutures that's coming from that anchor in the front. We're pulling on the one that I do want, which is the working suture. And we're, then we're going to go to the posterior bundle of sutures here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create laxity or slack in all of those sutures and then we're going to pull on the suture that I want to pull out and the one that we're pulling on is going to be the looped end of the passing suture and that's going to be that one. And we're going to thread the working suture through the of the anterior anchor through the splice in the posterior anchor. 
I've threaded this uh, suture, the working suture, through the loop of the passing suture. This is the uh, junction of the white with the blue and white stripe. So now we're going to pull on the uh, pulling end of our threading suture. Now I'm going to pull this so that it still kind of lacks above that segment of the cuff and I'm not, I'm not going to take all the slack out but I just want to get it to where it's kind of out of the way of threading the other splice, okay? Now we're going to do the opposite on this. Um, what we're going to do is now take the passing suture from our anterior anchor, so what we want is the looped end of the passing suture, okay? And so we pull on the looped end to take the slack out that's the looped end. Now let go and I'm going to pull that out through the lateral working portal. And then we're going to come to our posterior group of sutures. And again we're going to create that laxity. And then we're going to pull on our working suture, which in this case is the black and white one. And now it straightens out. It makes it easier for me to select out the one I want. And there it is. And then once again we fold that white end back on itself till the very tip of the suture gets to the uh, junction with the uh, striped part. And now we'll just thread the splice. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this one down to about the same point that I brought that first loop down with the same amount of redundancy in the loop. So now you see we have some redundancy in the two loops. It's just about the same for the two of them. And now we're going to reciprocally pull on the pulling end of the two, sh of the, uh, two sutures. So we'll just, as you see, just kind of back and forth, reciprocally pulling until we get a nice tissue indentation. Now before we cut these, I'm just going to look through a lateral viewing portal and let you see how that's come down so nicely. So you can see how the medial row is totally down. So we're going to cut the ends of these two working sutures. And then we'll do the same for the posterior one. So now all we have left are the tapes. And we're going to crisscross those like a standard uh, speed bridge over to two lateral anchors. So now we're going to use the uh, suture tape fiber link and what we're going to do is show you how to reduce uh, dogger. You have this out already because that's what we use to pass all of our sutures through our, our two points through the rotator cuff. So now we'll just use that same link and come through. And let's use it here now for this posterior dog ear. And we'll pre-place it and we'll come back just somewhat posterior to our sutures. And this will make just a single cinch loop and we'll tighten that down. So there's the cinch loop that's going to reduce the posterior dog ear. So now what I'm going to do is to include this in the um, suture group that goes to our posterior lateral anchor. So what I want to do is along with that cinch loop we're going to bring a tape from our posterior anchor and a tape from our anterior anchor. So now we're going to Pick a spot on this lateral metaphyseal part of the greater tuberosity and internally rotate slightly. Yeah, this is a standard swivel lock. This is not the knotless swivel lock. We won't need that safety stitch, so we'll take it out. And now we can cut the ends of these tapes and the end of the cinch loop. And now we'll take out our, our remaining tapes. And I'm going to show you this time how to reduce a dog ear after that lateral anchor is in place. So we'll take out one tape from each anchor. For this anchor, for the anterior dog ear, I'm going to want to use um, the knotless mechanism to reduce the dog ear. And we're not going to need the tape. We have this uh, knotless swivel lock, but we're going to cut the tape out of there. So we'll cut it and then just pull it out from the eyelet. So we still have our knotless mechanism which comes up through the cannulation of that uh, inserter. 
So now what we're going to do is externally rotate some. So now we'll take this uh, driver off, okay, and we'll have our knotless suture mechanism still in place. Yeah, what we're going to do now is cut these two tapes. So now you can see that we've just got the knotless uh, mechanism sutures left. We have the working suture, that's the blue and white, and then we have the passing suture, which is the black and white. So now it's looking more like the knotless suture tech uh, configuration that we're used to. So what I'm going to do here, usually on these dog ears, I like to use this labral scorpion because uh, it's a little bit tight to get the big jaw of a regular scorpion under there, but that small profile lower jaw of the labral scorpion passes under that little uh, tight area better. And so we'll just pass this suture. I want to point out on this pull suture, the shuttling suture, that you have the looped end, which is round, like a standard suture, but then the pulling end, which is the straight end, is flat, like a suture tape. And that is, makes it easier to distinguish between the two. I'm going to take the slack out of these two ends of the working suture, and then we're going to pull on the, on the uh, looped end. And that's the one I want. And you see that it's rounded. Then I want to simultaneously pull that one out and the working suture out without any interposed sutures or tissue. So I'll grab those two at the same time and now I know nothing is interposed between the two. So now we'll just thread the end of that, uh, of that suture, the working suture, through the looped end of our passing suture. And then we're going to pull on the passing end, the, the straight end, and thread the splice. And then we can just cinch that down. It makes just a simple suture, which will reduce that re remaining dog ear. And now we'll just cut that off. So as we bring this down, if you're not quite sure if you have had enough tension in there to take all the slack out and to uh, have enough indentation, we can use this as some counter pressure. So just pull as I, pu as I push with a cutter. So pull a little more. There you go. And now we'll just cut it. And so now we can just look at the final result. So you see there's such a low profile, totally knotless, looks about perfect.